Hello there, back again. Today I have an Anoto fountain pen for your consideration. This is the Anoto Rosetta Stone Black Edition. Uh, I'm going to start with a box because it's a nice box. So you have a top lid with Anoto written on it. You have some packaging and a nice sil uh, silver, nice wooden lacquered box. Excuse me. There is a silver polishing cloth in the bottom there. Nice lacquered box, wooden finish. Uh, you get a pen in a nice little velvety sleeve with the Anoto logo there. Nice little card with um, you know your edition number signed by Anoto proprietor, date of original purchase, and the name of the edition. Um, so I'll come back to this. You get a nice little pen bed there, which lifts out. Little card, Anoto, Discover the Eternal. And a nice little message there. Uh, and a little information slash use and care mini card booklet jobby. Out back in there. Let's take that out and lose the box. It is a very nice box. Nice little cushion at the bottom there. Um, you can also select to get your pen in a leather pen roll um, instead of the box. If you don't like a massive cumbersome box clogging up the place, if you're the sort of person who doesn't throw boxes away, must admit I am that sort of person. And I did um and ah over getting um, the full box or the pen roll. And I just, uh, my little internal old fashioned snobbery got in the way there. And I, I, I need the box, I need the box, it's lovely. Anyway, so um, nice little velvety pen sleeve. And contained within that is the pen which is the Anoto Rosetta Stone Black Edition. Um, so it's kind of the little brother or cousin or just a different pen edition, if you don't want any of that rubbish, uh, to the uh, Rosetta Stone. The original Rosetta Stone pen by Anoto uh, has the similar engravings there, the uh, Egyptian engravings. Uh, but it's made entirely of sterling silver um, and is more expensive than this. Uh, I'm a bit out of my reach, however much I might want to dream about it. Having said that, uh, this is delightful. Um, I'm just going to tell you how I came about it uh, quickly, as quickly as I can without dribbling on too much, which is my habit, and then I will start dribbling about the pen itself. Um, so this, I got this at the London Pen Show in March 23 this year, at time of recording. Um, actually took my daughter to that pen show, she wanted to come, amongst other places. I wandered over to the Anoto table because I wanted to show her like my unobtainable grail pen, uh, which is actually the Anoto Magna Carta, uh, which I, slobber over from time to time but again is a sterling silver solid pen and well out of my price range anyway whilst i was there they also had the uh rosette stone uh and i was you know chatting to my daughter oh this is the pen this these pens i'd love these pens can't daddy can't afford these pens but i'd love these pens um feng one of the uh owner proprietors of anoto along with james uh, overheard me saying that and said, well, there is a uh, slightly more affordable option of the Rosetta Stone. Would you like to have a look at it? And I said, uh, uh, yeah, OK, I'll, I'll have a look at it. Um, and produced this. Uh, and 
and we chatted for a while and then he went off to serve some other customers and I was chatting to James, the other proprietor, for a while. Two of the nicest people you could ever hope to meet, by the way. Um, but yeah, we were chatting about the pens they make and the heritage that they have. If you pop onto the Anoto website, they've got uh, like a heritage uh, collection. Um, so you've got things like this. Um, there's other things such as a longitude pen, which is made, um, or certain aspects of it, trims, clip, etc., made from a shipwreck, a specific one. I don't have the information to hand. Um, there's the hurricane pen with the clip made from propeller of an old World War II hurricane. I think they've just released the Flying Scotsman with furniture from uh, the axle of a particular train engine. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's just great history on some of these uh, and even just, just the designs of Anotos I love. Um, I don't know if you can tell. I'm up at six minutes and I haven't even gone through the parts of the pen. Uh, I'll try and shut up for a second and actually do a pen review and maybe gush a little more at the end. So, Rosetta Stone Black Edition. Uh, Anoto Chevron clip with Anoto logo in, so all the furniture on this pen is sterling silver uh, with a burnished kind of look to it. It is uh, sterling silver, you've got the hallmark there. Um, Anoto logo on coin on the cap finial again in sterling silver and sterling silver limited edition finial down the bottom number 34 of 200 this is uh unscrews it in one two two and a quarter gonna call that um which is an improvement on my other anoto which i have previously reviewed i'll put a link down in the description but um I think that's like my other one is nigh on four turns so that was my only bugbear for that one really um so that's greatly improved it's like two and two and a bit i can live with that um you've got very nice smooth cat threads there um if yeah almost unnoticeable join between barrel and section so this is a cartridge converter pen with supplied an auto converter uh, buying through an auto, you can also get, there is an option for a plunger filler, their plunger filler system, um, for an upgrade at whatever cost that is. I want to say about 70 pounds, 80 pounds, something like that. Uh, attached here, we have a bicolor, two-tone, whatever you want to label it, uh, 18 karat gold number seven nib, and I believe they're made by Bach for an auto and a plastic feed. Uh, screw in nib unit so you can swap these around with other Anotos of the same size fitting. Again, uh, so as standard, these comes with steel nibs, number seven size. Uh, you pay for an 18 karat gold upgrade, number seven, or you can pay for uh, 18 karat gold, number eight upgrade, um, which obviously they have to presumably do something different with the section, but you can select those as options. You can also select uh, an added barrel weight to go inside the barrel, like a brass tube, to be fitted in there for some extra weight. Um, I talked about that a bit on my other review. Uh, this doesn't have that, because uh, I just bought it at the pen show, kind of as seen as it were. Uh, I may or may not get one fitted in the future, or that plunger filler that I talked about, but anyway. Um, does post, not terribly deeply. You will find that back weight's a bit because of all the silver in the cap here. Um, but it is possible if you want to. I don't, for no other reason, and I don't really want to be rubbing on this. I'm sure it's fine, but I don't want to take that chance, and uh, I'm not generally a poster anyway. That is a nice size in my hand. Some measurements of the pen. 
Um, so all approximate measurements and it is inked, so give or take a gram in the weight there. Uh, so capped, uncapped and posted, capped, uncapped and the weight of the cap. So as you can see, um, without the added barrel weight, because this doesn't have that, uh, the weight of the pen, uncapped and the cap are nigh on exactly the same. As I say, it's inked, so give or take that a little bit. Um, the section is 13 millimeter. Uh, just about all the way along it does taper just ever so slightly down at the um, towards the end and then the barrel uh, have I got that the wrong way around I have haven't I I have I've written that the wrong way around do excuse me so the barrel is 13 millimeter and then tapering a little bit section is 10 just going down to nine and then just with a little flare outs at the top apologies flip them over here you go. Clear? Marvellous. For some other pen uh, comparisons, try not to do my usual and knock this all over the place. Um, so you've got the Rosetta Stone Black next to the Anoto Magna Classic. So as you can see, it's just a bit longer. Than the standard Magna Classic, um, but pretty much the same girth. Uh, Lamy Safari, Twisby Eco, sorry, uh, Leonardo Memento Zero Grande, Asfine P30, you've got a Leonardo Memento Magico, Pilot Capless 1990s era, and a Sailor Pro Gear Regular. Let's see how this writes. A little bit of zoom, not that much. And a little bit of focus. Uh, so this is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. And here we have the And also is that the stone black edition. And this is 18 karat gold, medium, number seven size nib. And the ink in here. Is diamond Earl Grey. It keeps up nicely. Um, I'm just going to try that faster. Keeps up fine. Um, I'm noticing it's not actually coming out the best here. Um, I think I've got a bit of finger grease on this paper. But I'll carry on. Maybe get another piece if I need. Um, it's wetness. Nicely wet, this nib. Um, I've got no pressure at all. As you can see, that puts down a nice little bit. Um, very smooth. There's a nice bit of feedback, but um, what I would say is pleasant feedback. It's not quite 
if you can hear it. See the bit of finger grease there, I think. Um, if you can hear it. But um, it's nice, pleasant feedback. Not quite felt tip kind of feedback, but um, probably closer to that than pencil, I suppose. Uh, line variation. You can get a bit out of that. Not flex, so careful because you don't want to spring your nib, but it is nicely soft. You can get a bit of bounce out of that. Reverse. You can get a little bit, a couple of words maybe, it does start to go dry. But relatively smooth. Um, you get a bit of increased feedback, but not quite scratchy. But very nice with no pressure at all, that nib. Um, which is one of the reasons I've got the gold nib on there. Uh, as at the pen show, after Feng talking to me about this and me being me and being very tempted, um, actually we walk, uh, went away, I said I'd go away and think about it. Um, so me and my daughter went away to have a little scribble at one of the tables. Um, and then my mind kind of clicked it and I was like, oh, okay. Okay, yeah, going for that. Um, so I got this at a generous show price. I think it was 20%, maybe 10% off. Um, and I went back and I said, yep, yeah, okay, I'm going to pull the trigger. Yep. Yeah. And uh, as I say, it's standard with a steel nib. And then Feng asked the question, would you like a steel nib or a gold nib? And very honestly, he did say for himself he probably wouldn't say that the gold nib was a not worth it but um i said look is is the gold nib worth the upgrade because we're talking an extra hundred and something pounds for the gold nib and he said honestly i don't think it's a deal breaker uh handily at the table they had all the different steel and gold nibs to try um, so I did a few writing samples and whatnot, and I have to say the steel nibs are superb, but um, I just noticed enough uh, in the writing experience to make me want the gold nib, and he did me a little deal on that as well. Still not a cheap package. Um, so this package with this nib uh, came in at... 600 pounds is by far my most expensive item in my collection but on top of i mean i should say it is plastic slash resin but the detail and work that has gone into this i mean you know it's a bit of art it's a bit of whatever you like bit of heritage bit of art bit of you know flamboyance but um it's just gorgeous i just love looking at it uh, i love writing with it the writing experience at nib superb i mean you've also got the british museum on the cat band there so uh, james was explaining to me proceeds from their certain uh, collections i think they send a percentage to the british museum which is very nice I just love it. Um, so yeah, as I say, back to the nib, I just noticed a little bit of bounce, a little bit of extra bounce with the gold, a bit of softness. Um, it's lovely and wet. Uh, the steel nibs were great too, but um, I was just tempted over the edge by that. As you can tell, I like the pen. I've probably said most of the things I like about it, which is pretty much everything. And what do I not like about it? Not a lot. If I'm really honest, I mean, yeah, I might, I might go away and um, send it off to a noto to have either the extra barrel weight fitted, 
it's a little bit lighter uh, than my other Anoto for that reason. Um, I mean, yeah, it's very comfortable with my hand, but I wouldn't mind a few extra grams in the barrel. So I might do that. I might get the barrel weight or even the plunger filler fitted in there. Um, honestly, that's about it. People are going to say it's a plastic pen. Is it worth that? Depends. Depends if you think it's worth it for you. Um, I can tell you that's a lot of money for me uh, to lay out on a pen. A lot. Do I regret it? No. Um, I think I journaled exclusively with this for about three or four weeks. And usually as someone who changes the pen I journal with daily, um, that tells you how much I enjoy writing with this pen. Do I regret it? No. So that that's a sign uh, of what I think it's worth it to me. Is it worth it for you? Depends on your taste, really. Let's face it, there's other plastic pens out there of a comparable price or more. So it's all about what's worth it to you. But I love it. Hope I've not bored you to tears too much. Um, have a lovely day. I'll stick some info and links and stuff down in the description. Take it easy. Bye.